First, I'd like to thank um, Thierry and every member of the staff of WPC for the extraordinary organization of this con conference this time, and to thank you for having me here in the, in the panel and in the conference. Yesterday was the memorial day of the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated in the 4th of November, 1995. He was not assassinated by a terrorist, Islamic terrorist. He was assassinated by a young Jew coming from a radical, extreme part of the society of Israel. The assassination happened after a big demonstration of more than 100,000 people on the square of Tel Aviv municipality. Immediately after Robin finished the convention, he went down and the guy shot him. The one who shot Rabin wanted to stop the peace process. We had two big leaders in Israel which really changed the history of the Middle East. One of them was Menachem Begin, which made the peace with Egypt, and we draw from all Sinai until the last centimeter and make peace with Anwar Sadat. And the other one is Rabin, which signed the Oslo Agreement, as well as done peace with Jordan, signed the peace with Jordan and Clinton. And the real question is really we arrived to a deadlock. Is the hope for peace in the Middle East between Israel and Palestinian lost? I'm from those who believe that it is not. We are not in a deadlock. That there is hope to have peace if we act in the right way, as, why, as I will explain right away. First, let me find out why we are stuck, why we are not making any movement. We have at least twice an opportunity to have peace with the Palestinian, a final peace, which had been rejected, I'm sorry to say, by the Palestinian leaders. One of them is when Prime Minister Barak, with Clinton, suggested to Arafat almost everything that the Palestinians ask for having peace. Palestinian state of the most of the Western Bank, with the old city of Jerusalem, almost everything, Gaza, of course, and Arafat refused. Second time was Prime Minister Ormert, which came to an agreement with Abu Mazen. And he signed the agreement. And Abu Mazen asked for a few more days. and didn't come back to sign. And I asked myself, why they're not signing? Why they're not finalizing this peace? Today, doesn't they want to have a Palestinian state? My answer to myself having a politics so many years, and governments of Israel so many years in different capacities, and the security cabinet and know everything around. My conclusion was that, in matter of fact, in order to achieve peace, we need two partners. One of them was demonstrated by the governments of Israel, by prime ministers, which giving really all the price which is supposed to be paid for the peace. But there is another part, which is the Palestinian side. What we expect, what the Palestinians said, have to make a decision in order to have peace is one very tough for them, but it is one that they have to make it, which is to give up what they call the right of return, which means the refugees would not, cannot come back into the territories of Israel after the peace with the Palestinians. They can come back to the Palestinian state, but not into Israel. No Palestinian leader, in my opinion, will sign, will accept this decision. They cannot do it alone. So how we solve the problem? I believe that the only solution to arrive at peace with the Middle East is through what we call the Saudi initiative or the Arab initiative. I'm the biggest supporter of this initiative. Since 2002, when it's come to the world, I'm fighting to try to explain it, to, to convince the, minister, the, the prime ministers of Israel, the government, the Knesset, to go on that direction. Why I believe that this is the solution. Let me quote two sentences from the Arab Initiative. The Arab Initiative says, if you make peace with Israel, with the Palestinians, by going back to 67 borders and find an agreeable, justified solution to the Palestinian refugees, we, 57 Islam countries, are willing to make peace with Israel, full normalization, and that will be the end of conflict. Fantastic. I believed in it so so, uh, so strong, then when Prime Minister Sharon, I was also a minister in his government, want to disengage from Gaza, 
I was suggesting to him not to disengage from Gaza. And instead, pick up the Arab initiative, call Riyadh, and let's talk to them, let's negotiate this initiative, because that really can bring us to peace. Why? Four reasons. First, if really we make peace through the Arab initiative, we are in a situation that we have a guarantee to existence of this peace, because we are making peace with 57 Islam countries. Not only with Palestinian, the people say you make with Palestinian peace, somebody to make, to the, tomorrow will come and tear it up like what happened with Gaza when they disengage. They make it out of it Hamastan. So it's giving us guarantee to exist some peace. Second, this will be the way, in my opinion, to contend really the problem of Hamas and Fatah, to bring them together. Even now, there is a big progress because of the activity, very positive and really aggressive activity of uh, President Assisi of Egypt, which brought situation that now they are trying to make reconciliation. Third, it is the best way to transfer this agreement in the public of Israel. Because if you coming to the people of Israel with agreement not only with Palestinian authority, but with 57 Islam countries making full normalization, it will change the world, it will change the Middle East, it will be much more easier and faster to pass it in the Knesset and in the public. And why I'm, I'm, I'm positive today and optimistic because many things happen in the Middle East in where we are living. I want to count them. One, the interest of the Arab states had been changed. They find themselves in the same situation in which we were fighting Islamic terror, radical Islamic terror. Now we find Egypt fighting against the brother of Islam, Islam, Iraq, everywhere we go. They find themselves in the same situation with us. That's the reason why we are today connected much more better with the Arab countries, even we don't have a diplomatic relationship with many of them. But we have a very good cooperation today fighting terror. It's hard to believe, but it's fact. Second, the threat of Iran. The Iran threat of nuclear weapon is not against Israel. I don't accept it. They would be stupid to attack us. They want to have a nuclear weapon in order to, to be the strongest part of the Arab world. And it is make all the Arab states around Iran very worried, including Saudi and Kuwait and all the Gulf countries and others. They don't want Iran to be uh, uh, with, with nuclear weapon. On that case, our interests are together. Also, we, we don't want them to have, of course, a nuclear weapon. Secondly, Saudi is changing. You've seen what happens now. The new governor, the new governor of Saudi, which going to be the crown prince, is doing things which we could not imagine just a few weeks ago. Look, the changes he done, that shows that he really taking seriously his position as the next king of Saudi, and he changed all the government people. He host, host, uh, hospital, uh, he hospitalized now the Hariri, which ran away from Lebanon because he's afraid of his life from what's going on in Lebanon. He want to build a very modern, beautiful city with 500 million. He's changing Saudi. And secondly, he's very supportive. Saudi became very supportive to the peace process. In matter of fact, they, it is their initiative. And last but not least, it was, it's funny to say it, but I will say it. There is some contribution of Trump. He did something good. When he came to visit Israel, he passed through Saudi. And he made a change in the attitude of Saudi and other Arab countries toward peace with Israel. He did. So now there are too many elements which support the possibility to achieve peace. Last but not least, people ask themselves, how can we make peace if the Prime Minister of Israel is so right-wing, party, extreme, against peace, don't want to give up anything? And I'm saying, in Israel, we have a paradox that I call it the hawks of peace and the doves of war. It means that only hawks can make peace with the national consensus, and only left can make war with national consensus. Begin make the greatest peace ever with the big, biggest country, Arab country, with Egypt. Nobody else, and I have been in the party of Begin, I know him personally, I work with him, again, as, as with Rabin. Nobody in the Likud, if somebody in the Likud would say before Begin became prime minister that he would giving up Sinai, they would throw him them out of the, of the politics of the party. 
and Begin can pass it easily in the Likud. Because automatically get the support of the left and vice versa. The same today. Yes, we have Netanyahu, which is quite extreme. He's not now very comfortable for peace. But if he will be brought, maybe by Trump, to a point in which you have a decision to make peace, he can pass it. Because he's coming from the right wing. It will pass, especially if it will come through the Arab Initiative. I believe that the problem of the, with the Palestinians and with the Arabs is, is an Israeli Arab problem. It's not an American problem. Americans do not understand Arabs. I'm sorry to say it. In my opinion, that do, totally do not understand. We should solve it ourselves. If we would negotiate Oslo with the Americans, it will never be Oslo agreement. Oslo succeeded because we negotiate personally Israelis and Palestinians in Oslo without any confidential, without secret, until everything had been signed up. I'm sorry just for one thing, that they did not conclude everything in that agreement and not making it by stages, which was, in my opinion, a mistake, the biggest mistake of Oslo. That they didn't finalize from the beginning like we did with Egypt, from the beginning, all the agreement and do it by stages. So I really hope that we will arrive there. At least I'm keeping fighting to arrive there. I believe that we will. Thank you.